You guys, everyone, everyone just calm down. I'm still recovering from Dragon Con. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> yes, Tabitha, we will come back. Okay, back to work. <music> Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome. We're live from the shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm going to show you a little bit of vector work using Inkscape for the purpose of feeding this machine behind me here. That is our vinyl cutter. It's a plotter. It's used to cut things out like stickers or stencils and I'm going to give you some of the basics on how we do that. Then we're going to run that machine, make some stickers for naming all of our tools in the shop. Follow along. This one's going to be fun. So the first tool is our 3D printer. You guys named it the artist formerly known as Prince. Not Prince, but Prince. You know what I mean. And I've got Inkscape open here and I'm going to just quickly use some tools to knock something out and then we'll tweak it a bit. So there are text objects. We're just going to make a text here and call the artist. Whoa, let's, let's zoom in a little bit there. So you can see what's going on. Formerly known as. Uh, we can change the font. So let's pick a nice font for this. I like this one. And I'm going to make it this will be big, and we can scale it later, but it's there. The art is formerly known as, and that's just text. Um, but what you'll see here when I feed that into my cutting software is it won't recognize these as paths. I'll show you what that means. I'm going to save this, and then we'll head on over to our cutting software. Now, this is the software that came with my vinyl cutter. Your cutter may have a different one, but it's just shows the, uh, the area where you're going to be working. This is 12 inches wide. I like to work in portrait up here. And then, uh, then you load your file. So if I go to SVG, which is what Inkscape makes, and I uh, go to my desktop and go find prints, my file, it has a problem because there's no actual paths there. So let's go back to Inkscape. This is just a weird, wacky thing. If I go to the text object and select it and go to path and just do something like combine, um, it doesn't look like it changed, but I can no longer go in and edit the text, but it has become a path. So if I double click on it, you see all those lines on there. That's because this is now a path. So if I save that again and then go load that file again into my cutting software, like so. Where's my prints? It worked! Hey, look at that. That's really cool. And like I said before, uh, this can be scaled after the fact. Because it's a vector file, you can scale it after the fact. So there we go. That, that part's good to go. Now I need to add the prints part. So let's go back to our uh, Inkscape. And I'm going to... whoop. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to import the uh, the logo that I want. So if I go to File, Import, and I have my Prince logo. I just found this on Google Image Search. It comes up with some options. I just hit OK. And there is a big old logo there. Uh, hey, Britt. Hey. There's a big logo there. But again, this is not a path. Now there's a way to do that too. If you go to up at the top of the options or path, trace bitmap. And I don't think this is showing up on, on Inkscape uh, or on OBS. So I apologize it's not showing up. Um, but you hit OK. There's some options. You can tinker with those. But if you hit OK, uh, it should whoops, cut out. See, there are now two objects there. This one is the image we used. And I can delete that. And this one is now a path. And I know if I double if I double click on it, you can see all those nodes there. This is now a path, which is awesome. Um, the reason you need that is because the cutting software needs those paths. It needs to know where it's sending the cutting head. So there we go. Formerly known as prints, but I'm gonna put the word prints there. So P, oops text P-R-I-N-T-S prints 
And then let's pick a nice font for that. I like that Marcellus one that we had before. Uh, and I'm gonna make it gigantic, actually. There we go. Prints. And do a little bit of thing here. Like so. And there's our uh, there's our name. That's the name for our printer. Where it says for our 3D printer. And I think that's pretty wonderful. Um and now we can send it to our printing software, our cutting software. So again, we save the file, and then we head back over to our printing software. In this case, it's make the cut. And I can delete that and, and import it again. So I go to SVG and put prints. Oh, and I forgot that the text got, I did not um, punch out the text. So undo, go back to Inkscape. This text, I'm gonna go to path, uh, combine. That just, I'm sure there's a better way, but that, that just works. Save the file again, go back to make the cut input the thing and now I can make this as big as I want it I can rescale it here um, I'm not sure I see a spot on the front of my uh, printer that's about maybe six inches wide so this might actually be a good size for it here so it's good to go that's pretty good to go so all I, all I have to do is uh, the, the machine is plugged in there's a cut option and it's not showing up on uh, on OBS, so I apologize, but I just hit start and it will send it over to the machine. And I think, I think Prince needs to be hot pink. I believe that's hottest pink. Hottest pink, that's right. <laughs> it's clamped down like that. And there we go. That is the machine. It's all set. And now I'm just going to tell the cutter to go do its thing. Oh yeah. Hey, it's all done. Look at that. Well done, little machine. Let's liberate our piece of vinyl here. There we go. Now, when I weed this out, it should leave the text behind. Please leave the text behind. Yeah. Whoops. Oh no. Prince. This is the satisfying part. See to fix this little S. You go back where <laughs> you go back where you're supposed to go, buddy. There we go. Get that part out of there. There we go. Oh, that's not really on camera. Sorry about that, you guys. Here we go. We liberated the uh, text from the background. Now I've got a big old roll of transfer tape and I'll roll out a piece of that and cover this so that we can transfer our, our uh, piece of vinyl onto the printer or the cutter. So this is like a big roll of masking tape, of like low tack masking tape. And let's just do this. Oh, hey, Britt, can you hand me this, the spudger? It's be a good pet name, spudger. Spudger. Here's a spudger. So we have our big roll piece of, whoops. We have our big piece of transfer tape that's going to lay down on there. Like so. And then we spudge it. Like that. And then we can put this on the, the printer. This should just come off all perfect like. Like that. And then try 
and line it up all nicely. It's my elbow in the way. I think that looks okay. Fudge it with this thing here. And then hopefully when we peel it away. Yeah! Ta-da! And there is our sticker. I cut out something else on the cutter, and this one's gonna be a stencil. So it's a low-tax stencil vinyl that we used. And instead of weeding out all of the area around the letters, I'm gonna weed out just the letters because that is going to be painted instead of leaving the vinyl behind. So we're making ourselves a nice, pretty stencil for my table saw, which is hiding right there. Um, I figured since the table saw is dangerous that instead of leaving a vinyl sticker on it, it would be better to put a stencil on it. I can spray paint the letters and then peel off my stencil and not leave anything in the way of my material when cutting stuff down. There we go, Sawmule L. Haxon. And again, we're gonna put some of this stuff down. This is transfer tape so that we can transfer it over to our piece that we're going to paint. So I've got my stencil. It's going to go right there and peel away the backing. Make sure nothing else comes with it. Like that. Flip it over. I think it's going to go just like that. Squeegee it on, peel this off. There we go. Now I can spray that with paint. I'll take it outside to do that. Spray it, peel this off. So I ran outside, spray painted this real quick. It's not completely dry yet, but I can still peel off the stencil. And you'll see how cool it looks. So. Start at a corner, peel it off, careful, like that. And then there's some little spots here that just need to be picked up. And there, come on. Got some tweezers here too that help out. Oh yeah. And then the middle of the egg. I am Ninja Moose was wondering what kind of saw you have. I'll show you the name of it. Ugh. This is the I like to make stuff saw. <laughs> Bob did that, we didn't even know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Totally can't see the brand behind it. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on the live stream today and hopefully you learned a little bit about using Inkscape and using cutting software to run a vinyl cutter plotter machine like that. A lot of other software works similarly like for our laser cutter. So a lot of those skills transition. Uh, so I highly suggest you dive in and learn a little bit about vector making. In fact, I've got a premium video for sale on punishprops.com. It's just $5. It's an hour and a half of deep instructional content teaching you how I use Inkscape to draw my blueprints, patterns, just like the stuff I used to cut out these wonderful stickers and stencils. If you haven't already, head on over to twitch.tv slash punish props. Give us a follow over there, and uh, that way you won't miss when we go live. And of course, we will be live again next week and uh, on Thursdays as well for our Q&A at 5 p.m. Pacific. And we'll be back on Tuesday of next week for another live from the shop. Join us then.